Wavefronts and Refraction by kscience.com. This represents a less optically dense material, like air. And this is a more optically dense material, like glass. What I'm drawing here is a wave approaching the boundary between the two materials. This here is the boundary between two materials. Because the wave is traveling along the normal 90 degrees the boundary, the light is going to not bend away from the normal. It's going to continue in a straight line. What I'm drawing now represents the wave fronts. The wave fronts. These are imaginary lines perpendicular to the ray. So they're at 90 degree angles to the ray. Not the normal and not the boundary. The wave fronts. These are imaginary lines perpendicular to the ray. The wave fronts represent parts of the wave one wavelength apart from one another. So they can be drawn representing the crest or the peak or the trough of the wave. They're examples of regions that can be one wavelength apart from one another. As the wave enters a more optically dense material like glass, the wave fronts get closer together. The wavelength decreases as it enters a more optically dense material and it slows down, but the frequency stays the same. This is the normal line, 90 degrees to the boundary, and the wave traveled along the normal. So these are the wave fronts of the wave, imaginary lines perpendicular to the wave. And in a less optically dense material like air, the wavelengths are further apart. As you can see here, this represents an increased wavelength than in a more optically dense material. So in a more optically dense material like glass, the wave fronts are closer together. They're closer together in a more optically dense material. So wave fronts in less optically dense materials are further apart. And wave fronts in more optically dense materials are closer together. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. This is the boundary between two materials. And this is the normal line, 90 degrees to the boundary. This side of the boundary is air, a less optically dense material than this material here, which is water. Air is less optically dense, and water is more optically dense. And this is the boundary between the air and the water. So this is the incident ray approaching the boundary. These are the wave fronts drawn perpendicular to the incident ray. And they're drawn at 90 degrees to the incident ray right up until they get to the boundary. So because the wave is traveling between air and into water, the wave is going to refract and bend towards the normal. So the angle of refraction is going to be smaller than the angle of incidence. So the wave is going to change direction and bend towards the normal because it changes speed. It changes speed because the wavelength decreases, but the frequency stays the same. Therefore, it slows down. And in a more optically dense material, the wave fronts are going to be closer together. So I'm drawing the wave fronts closer together because the wavelengths are shorter in a more optically dense material, like water. So the wave fronts are further apart in air than they are in water. In water, the wave fronts are closer together. And the wave slows down at the boundary as the wave crosses from air into water and it bends towards the normal. But to summarize, the wave from less optically dense material moves across the boundary into a more optically dense material from air into water. And the wave slows down. So the wave fronts are now closer together in a more dense material. So the wave fronts are now closer together in a more dense material. 
And the wave front bends towards the normal. And the wave front bends towards the normal. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. This is the boundary between two materials that have a different optical density. And this here is the normal line, it's 90 degrees to the boundary. The incident ray is traveling through water and it approaches the boundary and it refracts and bends away from the normal line as it travels across the boundary into air because it speeds up and it refracts and bends away from the normal. So the incident ray is traveling through water and it crosses the boundary into air. Water, which is a more optically dense material, and it crosses the boundary into air, which is a less optically dense material. So these here are the wave fronts of the incident ray that is traveling through the water. These wave fronts are closer together than the wave fronts that will be in the air because the wavelength increases as it enters the air from the water. So the wave fronts are closer together in the water and they're further apart in the air. So the wave front from a more optically dense material moves into a less optically dense material from water into air and it crosses the boundary. And as the wave crosses the boundary from water into air, the wave speeds up. This is because the wavelength increases but the frequency stays the same. The wave fronts are closer together in the more optically dense material, which is the water. Then it moves across the boundary. The wave now travels across the boundary. And the wave front bends away from the normal. The angle of refraction is larger than the angle of incidence. The angle of refraction is larger than the angle of incidence. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. Press pause to practice using those key words. The answers will follow. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. Press pause to answer the questions. The answers will follow. And if you're stuck, just re-watch the video. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes.